This video is brought to you by the TLDR socials. Get more from TLDR by following us on Instagram and Twitter, where we post explainers that never make it to YouTube. The link is in the description below. There are a few certainties in life. Death, taxes, and if TLDR is making a video about Turkey, then it's probably not good news. Except for that one about their bonkers new canal. And unfortunately for President Erdogan, their economic woes just keep piling up. So in this one, we're going to be taking a look at Erdogan's most recent attempts to save the lira, how it's backfired, and what it means for Erdogan's political prospects. Before we get into this video, we should say that we've done a whole load of videos on this topic before, where we've covered how inflation works, macroeconomic vulnerabilities in Turkey, which by the way is now spelled like this, and the precise history of Turkey's monetary policy in detail. So if you want more information on all of that, then go spend 10 minutes of your life watching those. But the long and short of it is that this whole crisis has been caused by three things. First, the fact that in 2018, inflation in Turkey jumped up to 16%. Thanks to a combination of factors, including Trump's steel and aluminium tariffs, censorship of financial data, and Erdogan's interference with the central bank. The lira fell in value, which in turn meant that Turkey struggled to pay off its foreign debts and imports became more expensive, forcing up inflation. Second, Erdogan's unorthodox economic policy. Again, we've covered this in more detail in our other videos, but the TLDR is that the traditional economic theory suggests that you need to raise interest rates to lower inflation. Erdogan, for reasons best known to himself, thinks the opposite is true, and that raising interest rates actually creates more inflation, which is why he's told his central banks to cut rates and fired any governor who defies him. Unsurprisingly, this has only weakened the lira further, and made inflation worse, but as we'll get onto in a second, this hasn't deterred Erdogan. Third, Erdogan's near absolute grip on power. In a more balanced political system, Erdogan wouldn't be able to get away with this for as long as he has done. Someone would have stepped in and told him that his unorthodox monetary policy clearly isn't working and needs to stop. In Turkey though, Erdogan has become a sort of de facto sovereign, especially in 2017, when Erdogan won a constitutional referendum that turned Turkey from a parliamentary democracy into a presidential one, with Erdogan as president. Anyway, you get the point. Inflation started rising. Erdogan forced the central bank to cut interest rates, which has only made things worse, and no one has the political capital to stand up to him. As economists predicted, the lira continued to fall steadily in value until about December the 20th, when speculation about a possible bank run and Erdogan's invocation of his Muslim faith to defend his policy caused the lira to plunge another 20%, going from about 14 lira per US dollar to nearly 17. In response, Erdogan desperately announced a new policy, which we covered in this video. But the TLDR is that in an attempt to increase the appeal of the lira and stop Turks from converting their liras into dollars, Erdogan announced a new scheme where if you kept your savings in lira, the government will top up to keep pace with the dollar. So let's say you have a thousand lira in a savings account. The central bank interest rate is currently 14%, which means that after a year, you'll get 140 lira worth of interest, taking your total savings to 1,140 lira. Now, if over that year the lira has halved in value against the dollar, then you'd need 2,000 lira to be as wealthy as you were, at least in dollar terms at the end of the year. The government would therefore deposit 860 extra lira into your account, and you'd have 2,000 lira, the same dollar value as you had at the start of the year. Anyway, originally the policy looked like it was working. The lira had surged more than 50% against the dollar, going from nearly 17 lira per dollar on December the 20th to about 10 on December the 26th. Most people assumed that this was because Turks were actually converting their dollars into lira and then depositing it away. But some eagle-eyed journalists, not us unfortunately, as many of you pointed out in comments on our last video, noticed that the uptick coincided with a drop in Turkey's foreign exchange reserves. Essentially, Turkey's banks had spent the few dollars they had left buying lira, artificially increasing the demand for, and therefore the value of, the lira. In two days, Turkish banks had spent $7 billion buying lira, bringing the Turkish central bank's foreign exchange reserves to a two-decade low of $8.6 billion on December the 24th. 
This was more than double the $3 billion or so worth of lira actually deposited by Turks. So when the central bank stopped using up its foreign exchange reserves because, well, it didn't have any left, demand dried up and the lira started depreciating again. By January the 10th, the lira had lost 25% of its value, going from about 10 lira per dollar on December the 26th to about 14 lira per dollar, where it stayed since. Unsurprisingly, this has meant that inflation has continued to rise. The latest official data from December found that inflation hit a 19-year high of 36%, and independent estimates put the true figure even higher. For context, the UK is currently freaking out about the prospect of 5.4% inflation. Now, this is particularly bad news for both Erdogan and Turkey. The more the lira depreciates, the more Turkey's government is going to have to fork out to top up those currency-protected lira deposits. Given the state of Turkey's economy and public finances, even a relatively small depreciation, like the one that's already happened, is going to be difficult to cover. The government has three options here, and none of them are good. One, the government could massively increase taxes to pay for the cost. This is unlikely to go down well with your average Turkish citizen, especially when inflation is already increasing the cost of living and depressing GDP per capita, which has now fallen 50% from a high of $12,000 in 2013 to just $8,000 today. Two, the government could just renege on their promise. Again, unlikely to go down well with the Turkish citizens who have put their money in these currency-protected deposits and will probably further depress the value of the lira. Three, the government could essentially print more money by borrowing from the central bank, but this would probably make inflation even worse than it already is. All of these options will doubtless make Erdogan even less popular than he already is. Polling for the 2023 Turkish election now has Erdogan behind the three most likely presidential candidates, and his own approval ratings are now at a seven-year low. While Erdogan's AKP party is still the most popular party in the country, their support has waned significantly, and the two main opposition parties, the Republican People's Party and Good Party, are gaining in the polls. Erdogan has so far resisted calls from opposition parties for an early election, but if the Turkish economy fails to recover and his poll ratings continue to fall, the chances of an early election will increase. While this is good news for the opposition, in a sense it's impressive how well Erdogan's poll ratings have held up. Despite single-handedly crippling the Turkish economy, which would otherwise be doing pretty well, Turkey has a large, young, well-skilled workforce and well-balanced economy. Erdogan's AKP is still ahead in the polls, and Erdogan still has a fighting chance in the presidential elections. But what do you think? Can Erdogan turn around Turkey's economic woes? Or is its collapse, as well as his own, inevitable at this point? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram for more TLDR content. We've got accounts for all our channels where you can find exclusive content and updates on stories as they break around the world. And, of course, we really appreciate your support. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers for making videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description below.